Well, obviously, uh, the government are very keen to promote cycling, and with the Tour de France happening in uh, in Yorkshire, uh, starting in Yorkshire, we're keen to see what sort of legacy there can be, and also how we can capitalise on the, all the enthusiasm that we're seeing on the roads of uh, of Yorkshire at the moment. Uh, I, I heard about the Queen's Tunnel on the uh, uh, local uh, regional news, and uh, wanted to come and see it for myself. Uh, I've also learnt, by the way, that this uh, tunnel actually belongs to the Highways Agency, so I'm actually already responsible for it, and we need to see what we can do to uh, try and uh, uh, capitalise on this fantastic asset uh, and ensure that, uh, that it isn't lost to future generations. Uh, I think we'll need to get our calculators out and see what the actual uh, figure for this, but of course do nothing isn't an option because if this tunnel were to collapse there'd be problems for uh, properties uh, on, the, on the surface higher up so that we need to look at what can be done to uh, ensure that properties which uh, are above the tunnel are protected and to see what can be done to uh, use this vital resource uh, because you know this would link uh, the already developing cycle network in the country and with Halifax that way and Bradford that way it would be a fantastic opportunity I think that we're hoping to see what the possibilities are. I think for cyclists this would be a real asset, wouldn't it? Because West Yorkshire is, by its nature, very hilly and this tunnel for cyclists would cut out those hills. You would go straight under one of them. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the, the lycra-clad cyclists see hills as a challenge and go out of their way to go up hills, but the vast majority of us who like to cycle, particularly those who have children with them, you know, for this it would be an ideal way of, of, of combining uh, the excitement, I think, of going through a long tunnel, and we've had tunnels like this in the Peak District, tunnels like this in the Bath area, where, where been, they've been phenomenally successful in intr- attracting people to, uh, to enjoy going through the tunnels, enjoy the route which is no longer as steep, and of course that brings money to the local economy through tourism. The difference with this one is it's so long, we're talking about a mile and a half. Is it doable? Well, that's what I've come to find out. And obviously uh, the tunnel does need some work doing it. There are a number of ventilation shafts which also need to be maintained properly. So I think the, the message now is, you know, I've seen what a, what a strategic place this is, this is in. Uh, we've seen how this would, I think, promote uh, a lot of uh, recreational cycle use and maybe even uh, some people might use it for commuting. Uh, we need to see what the price tag would be for uh, pressing this back into use and, and how that can then really ensure that we have a, a long legacy from the, the Tour de France and other cycling things that are happening around the country. The government has doubled the amount spent on cycling. The Prime Minister has made it absolutely clear that uh, cycling is top of the transport agenda. So this is yet another opportunity to hopefully to make some progress. And just finally, when you walk down this cutting and turn that corner there, it's pretty awe-inspiring, isn't it? It's phenomenal. I mean, you, you imagine what our Victorian forebears uh, thought when they were building tunnels of this, of this size and some of the viaducts that were built, you know, and that was done basically with muscle power horses, maybe an odd steam engine, but, to, you know, the, 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 feet, the feats of, of, of previous Victorian generations are just awe-inspiring and, and that's another reason, I think, to make sure that this tunnel isn't lost to, uh, to our heritage. Mm-hmm.